G'day, how are you going? Welcome back to Boot Philosophy. And if you haven't been here before, my name is Tech, and I review boots and how they're made with, uh, when I can, a deep dive into the bootmaker and their vision and business model. But first, let me acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land I live and work on, the Wajik people of Nungabuja. Today, I'm taking a look at this uh, lightweight combat style boot, the Estor Flex Boot Flex. First off, taking a look at the Estor Flex Boot Flex, you can see it's a plain toe 6 inch service boot style or European country work boot style lace up boot. It's sleeker than the other European country work boots like the Old Muller or the uh, Urban Shepherd boots, but you can see the genesis. Very simple lines in two quarters with no backstay, a plain toe vamp uh, and stitched down to a crepe rubber sole and a low heel. The whole thing looks peasanty without being cheap and nasty, except that it is slimmer and sleeker than what you'd expect a Spanish or Italian shepherd might wear on their plains and rolling hills. In this grey-green stone-coloured suede, it's a very casual boot. When you look at these boots, uh, never mind putting them on, you think of relaxed days slouching or picnicking uh, in the sun or feet up on the couch indoors. So you wouldn't wear them with particularly smart gear, although you can wear them into the office with a uh, relaxed look in light khaki chinos uh, and a button down and sports coat. You can get away with any earth or neutral colored pants. They go with brown and blue jeans and because they're in suede and therefore more of a summer boot, they also go with all kinds of relaxed warm weather tops like untucked button down shirts or um, uh, t-shirts and light smart casual gear. Summery polo shirts would be great to wear with these because it's exactly the vibe that they give off. Taking a look at the maker, Astor Flex, they are an Italian boot and shoemaker that have a range of shoes and boots that they call something flex. This is the boot flex, but they also have chuckers called green flex and Chelsea's called bit flex and lots of other designs with flex names. On the whole, the construction of the range is all similar to the boot flex, which is basically stitched down onto crepe rubber outsoles. They don't seem to sell online through their own website at estoflex.it, but they do retail through some brick and mortar shops around the world, uh, as well as on various online retailers. I got these from American menswear site Huckberry, but in Australia, they sell through some other websites, just Google Astorflex Australia and you'll find a few of them. It's hard to figure out the history of the company, but it seems to have come from a bootmaking workshop, family-owned workshop, that started in the 1800s. And then sometime in, I think, the 1980s, two brothers succeeded from their father and coined the name Astroflex then uh, for the family business. The company is now run by the son of uh, one of these men and appears to remain a family-owned and run business based out of northern Italy. The current owner, Fabio Travanzoli, has updated some of their manufacturing methods but still based on stitch-down construction and above all value in comfort and a sustainable approach to their products. I said that they used the stitch-down method of construction, so let's take a look at that. The sole of the boot is made up of a crepe rubber outsole uh, and a leather midsole and the uppers are flanged out and stitched down all the way around the boot directly to the midsole after which the crepe rubber is glued on to the bottom of the midsole. The stitch down method of construction is super traditional used long before Goodyear welted shoes were invented by uh, Charles Goodyear Jr. It is reasonably water resistant in that water on the top should flow off the splayed out uppers and off the boot. It's arguably not as water resistant as Goodyear welting as it doesn't have that welt as an additional barrier. Stitch down is also resolable, uh, but arguably not as easily resolable as Goodyear welted shoes because it takes a bit of skill to cut through the stitches, replace the sole and then stitch back into the old stitch holes to avoid damaging the uppers. The crepe sole is natural rubber, not the blown rubber on red wing wedge soles which uh, some people call crepe soles. 
Real crepe soles, or sometimes called plantation soles, are basically natural rubber that is tapped from rubber trees, mixed with acids and hardeners at their plantation before it cures, and then poured into large flat tins like extremely large baking trays uh, to harden into sheets that look like these with all the knobbly bits. As they dry, the sheets are rolled through rollers called crepiers, a French word like crepe Suzette because they invented the method in Indochina. The sheets of crepe are then shipped off to rubber manufacturers. Some of them are chipped at a factory and mixed with chemicals to make vulcanized rubber and other rubber products. Some are left as crepe and used for making shoes and boots, the most famous example being the Clark's Desert Boot. Like the Clark's, this one is a one-piece sole with a very low heel carved into the sheet. The advantages of crepe rubber soles is that they are cheap, soft and comfy and very grippy. The disadvantages are that they are, look at them, super ugly once used and dirty. They are so grippy that they pick up all sorts of things that you walk on and I probably shouldn't touch them with my fingers. They pick up carpet fibres, they pick up sand and dirt, uh, they pick up hair and dead insects and they're probably sticky enough to pick up small dead animals. I mean, blimey, look at them. But they are spongy and so comfortable, uh, yet they're like walking on a big sheet of chewed bubble gum. They're glued onto a veg tanned leather midsole that's about four or five mils thick, so it's quite substantial. And then the uppers are stitched down onto the midsole all around the edge. They use a thick thread and it's not particularly careful stitching, but it will do for boots like this. Inside the boot is a fiberboard insole and then a removable leather comfort insole uh, with a little rubber on the underside. The inside of the boot is fully lined with what looks like a millimeter thick veg tanned natural calf leather. It's quite soft and smooth so your, your feet will slip in easily. They do put a little patch of rough out inside of the heel, I'm not sure if you can see that, to grip your heel or sock which is a nice touch. At the top of the collar is another layer of the same suede, quite a broad strip, to give that collar uh, its shape and strength. Outside, the uppers are made of a soft suede, it's about two mils thick. It's from an unnamed Tuscan tannery. I have owned these boots for a year and a half now and I think I can objectively say that while it's a nice leather, they don't wear as well as suede from Charles F. Stead in the UK. They do crease and look like they pick up more patina more quickly. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. On boots like this, patina on suede looks good on a casual roughy look. Uh, you can see, I hope the camera picks this up, the suede nap is a little longer than the fine soft suede from Stead. The nap uh, can be easily brushed one way and the other to create a dark and light effect. The pattern is super simple, just two quarter pieces and a vamp piece and the tongue. There's not even a backstay, the seam up the back is exposed, but that's okay I think for this look. Uh, stitching around the eyes and quarters are double stitched uh, and pretty neat and tidy. They look secure and, and no loose stitches that I've come across. The toe box is unstructured, but the heel has a stiff counter which is an internal counter covered up on the inside by uh, the lining and that patch of rough out. I'm pretty sure from the feel of it that it's a stiff Celastic. That's one complaint I have about the comfort. Celastic is a fabric material that's impregnated with plastic. When you warm it up either in an oven or uh, with a heat gun, it becomes pliable and moldable. But when it cools, it takes the shape you've molded it into and it becomes hard and not very supple. Unlike a leather heel counter or even a weatherboard heel counter, Celastic can be quite ungiving. Sometimes if you cut the piece too big or you don't quite slip it down far enough, the edge of it can cut into your Achilles tendon as you walk. This pair has that tendency. I haven't bothered uh, because I haven't worn these that much, but you can use your hairdryer or in my case, my wife's hairdryer, um, to heat the heel and when it's warm enough, you can just press and mold it so that it flares out a little bit to not cut into your Achilles tendon. That's an interesting thought. I don't wear these as much as I'd like to because they're not quite comfortable at the heels and maybe I should um, 
you know, I, I think I'll do that. I'll do that straight after the video. Um, the tongue. The tongue is lined, so it's comfortable. And although it's not gusseted, they do give you a little lace loop to keep the tongue in place. There are eight blind eyelets. Blind eyelets are where there's no hardware, or sometimes are where it's backed by some hidden metal, but un un unmetalled on the outside. In this case, nothing, just holes in the leather. But there are three pieces of leather there, the outside upper, the lining, and the suede strip at the inside. All in all, that's about five or six mils, so it's pretty secure and it won't tear. These boots do have a, a, a cloth pull tab at the back, but that's worse than useless. Only a small child could get their finger through that loop, and it's a little too short to just pull on it easily. Really, it's only good for getting in the way and scrunching up the back of your pants if you wear slim pants. At least they're only cloth, so I usually tuck them into the back of my boot after I put them on. Being suede, leather care can be easy or a pain, depending on what you want from these boots. If you see them as a casual boot that looks best uh, as they age in patina, uh, where the suede gets a bit marked and uneven, you don't have to do much. You do need to get a suede brush and a suede eraser. A suede brush is a small brush made of very stiff bristles or sometimes copper bristles. A suede eraser is, um, well, it's just that. It's an eraser, exactly the same as what we used to use at school, especially if you're my age. I have affiliate links to both in the description below. You won't pay any more than usual, but if you buy using my link, I'll get a bit of a kickback, like three or four cents, I think. <laughs> uh, when the suede does get a mark, you just use the eraser and you, well, erase the mark, you know. As the nap gets a bit worn, you brush it with a suede brush, first one way against the grain to clean it, and then with the grain to smooth it out. If you want to keep the suede cleaner, uh, that's a little more work. All of the above applies, but you can also use a suede shampoo from time to time. Suede shampoo is a little less aggressive than saddle soap, and you should clean up the dirt uh, that accumulates with it quite easily. If you want to keep the suede looking pristine, like, you know, brand new, don't bother. <laughs> in fact, don't buy these and instead get the boot flex in one of your smooth leathers. Being in European company, these come in European sizes. I bought these from Huckbury, uh, so they were listed on the website in US sizes. But you can see the European sizing uh, stamped on the tongue. Basically, get half size down from your Brannock size. That's not your sneaker size. Sneakers come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Go and get your feet measured on a Brannock device. That's one of those aluminium things you stand on at the shoe store, uh, where the sales clerk then slides levers around to size your feet. So my Brannock size is a US 8.5 in D width. That's equal to a European 41.5 and a UK 7.5 in medium width. However, most of my heritage boots are a half size down from my Brannock, making them usually a US 8D or a European 41 medium or a UK 7 medium. These are size 41 and a good fit. There's a thumb's width in front of the uh, toe and because of the rounded toes, no hot spots at my toes. The ball of the foot is nicely snug, like the proverbial firm handshake. There was not a lot of breaking in because of the softness of the suede and the lining and the crepe rubber sole, but I did have to spend maybe two weeks to wear in the stitch right at the corner uh, of the outside of the quarters. Those did take a while to stretch out. I've already told you about the discomfort of the heel counters. Uh, underfoot, they are surprisingly not that comfortable. The shock absorption is fine because the crepe is soft and bouncy, but arch support is non-existent. The inside of the boot is flat and there's no shank that holds up the gap between the heel and the ball of the foot. So despite the low heel, my arches collapse into that gap. I had to buy some stick-on arch wedges to put under my arches. Now that I've decided to do something about the heel counters later on, maybe that will improve the comfort. Not the best, but okay. As for value, these cost me US $130 on sale in Huckbury. They normally list for 215 US dollars, uh, but they are always on sale in Huckbury uh, when they're listed. On Aussie site uh, fashionlane.com.au, 
They sell for around 220 Aussie and elsewhere. I've seen them listed for more, but again, always on sale. At over 200 US or over 300 Aussie, I think you'd be struggling to say that they're worth that value. I'm pleased to have bought them at 130 US or under 200 Aussie at the time, but I don't think I'd buy them for much more. All in all, these are a pretty pair of boots. They are casual boots, so you wouldn't want to uh, beat them up. But worn casually, they're reasonably comfortable, stylish, and will wear into a very nice patina. The crepe rubber sole is soft, but it doesn't have great arch support. And boy, uh, it picks up dirt like a vacuum. For what I paid, I'm happy. I'm glad to have a boot like this in my rotation, but I wouldn't run out to get another pair at the full price. So there you are. Love them or leave them. Tell you what, don't love me and leave me. Click on the like button, and if you haven't subscribed, click on the subscribe button. This is not my profession. I make these videos because I love boots, and it's fun to share that with you. But growing my channel means that I get a bit of ad revenue come back to me, and that helps me to defray my cost and time making these videos. So help me out. Click on like and subscribe. Until next time, Take care and see you soon.